Since we're heading into the best time of the year, which is fall in my opinion, the spooky season, so you know basically everyone's going to start talking about vampires and pumpkins, but most of all ghosts, spirits. But there was a time when spirit spirits were talked about all year round. Hello, welcome to Occult Facts. I'm Anna and I will be talking today about spiritualism, defined as a system of belief or religious practices based on supposed communications with spirits of the dead, especially through mediums. If you know anything about spiritualism, you're going to think that I'm going to start with the Fox sisters, but I'm going to give you some other known spiritualists, early foundation based. So I'm talking about Emanuel Swedenborg. He basically laid the foundation of talking to spirits um, for future spiritualism, uh, spiritualist. He was a philosopher, a theologian, a scientist, and most of all, a mystic. He wrote several books about the afterlife. He believed you could converse with demons, angels, and spirits. You didn't have to have a priest or a deacon or anyone to aid you in this. He thought you could directly talk to them. Something that was very controversial at the time and this time being around the 18th century. Franz Anton Mesmer was a German doctor that was known for mesmerism, an early form of hypnotism, which was used in the spiritual movement later on as it progressed. There was also Andrew Jackson Davis. He combined the works of Swedenborg and Mesmer. He was an American who was a mesmerist. <laughs> Try saying that fast. A clairvoyant and a faith healer. He claimed spirits would speak to him. He wrote a book called The Principles of Nature, Her Divine Revelations, and A Voice to Mankind. Davis was known in the spiritual community as John the Baptist of modern spiritualism. This now finally brings us to the famous or infamous, depending on your opinion, Fox sisters. The night before April Fool's Day, Maggie Fox, age 14, and her sister Kate, age 11 years old, um, heard raps on the wall and thumping. Some say it was to play a trick on their very strict Methodist mother. But the parents, alerted by the girls, heard the raps and the thumping as well. The father, Mr. Fox, then went to get their neighbor, Mary Renfeld, Field, sorry, for some help. Mr. Fox was then told by the neighbors, the neighbor or neighbors, uh, the rumor that a peddler was murdered and he was said to haunt the home that they're in and he was buried under the house. From that night forward, news spread around town and it was a small community. Um, Kate asked for confirmation of the rumor of the spirit. And basically what happened was um, she got the name Mr. Splitfoot. That was their nickname for him. The family soon um, abandoned the house because it became too much and people were witnessing this and they were sent to stay with their older sister, Leah. But again, tales of the girl's experiences traveled far and wide. The Fox sisters were invited to speak at an event, you know, like a little seance that further propelled the sister's reputation of communications with the spirit. Their older sister, Leah, began touring with them and she also was using her being a medium at this point. They were so high in demand. The sisters were not the only ones at this time that claimed to speak to the dead. Others started to also hold seances and other forms of communications besides the rapping and the thumping and the tapping. Um, they would use table, uh, table tipping, also automatic writing, and some even had more direct approach with the spirit speaking. Um, this was called channeling as we would know it today. James Van Mansfield, known as a spiritualist postmaster, would hold a sealed envelope to his head and he would read these sealed up uh, papers, you know, not opened, um, with the aid of the spirits. 
This was around 1853 and a great reform was happening in the United States with religion, especially in Rochester, New York. Um, various new churches were popping up. Um, there was tent revivals, more, you know, the Mormons, Mormons started at this time and other churches. Um, there was about 33 American, 33 million Americans in the United States at the time. And about one third of Americans believed in spiritualism or, and, and some were anti-religion altogether. Spiritualism was considered a very natural experience. It was not deemed crazy at the time because so many people were part of the spiritual movement. And then in 1860s, W.H. Um, Mumber, I don't know if I said his name right, was the first to bring spirit photography into use. Now he himself was not a spiritualist. He just began taking these photos and spirits uh, would supposedly appear um, some believe this was a final proof um, the spiritual for the spiritual movement, but indeed, um, you know, some thought it was really real and others thought it was a complete fraud. Spiritualism was very popular in the northern states, but there was um, a pocket of believers in the south as well, especially in New Orleans. It took hold the most popular area. When the Civil War began, spiritualism began to change. The spiritual movement was very progressive for its time. It advocated abolishment of slavery. It also believed in reforms in marriage, child's rights, and also um, labor reform. But as the war be dragged on and finally ended, these beliefs were not pushed forward. So this made the spiritual movement kind of wane a bit. Some began to lose their faith in the spiritual movement, like I said. Also around 1881, I mean 1888, one of the Fox sisters, um, Maggie, denounced spiritualism. She says that, you know, she they did by doing their toes, making the noise and everything. She was given a fee for this because um, they weren't making a lot of money and she really needed it. But some say that she did this to lash out against her older sister, Leah, um, who was having issues with one the other sister, Kate. And so this started a big um, rivalry, also against renowned spiritualists. So to kind of, you know, give it to them at the time. She was in, you know, like I said, great need of money. She did later recanted her statement, but this already damaged the spiritual movement. Okay, so by the early 19th century, Harry Houdini made it his crusade to debunk many mediums as frauds. And there was also an attack by organized religion and you know other established religions to stop the movement of spiritualism. But it was completely, this was in America, but it was also across the pond and basically it was thriving in England. And in 1951 to fast forward um the fraudulent uh, mediums act was passed it was illegal for people to pretend or profit as a medium um this was repealed in 2008 there were still practice there are still practicing spiritualist churches in the united states and also in england and europe um they are there were many famous um believers of spiritualism as well such as mary todd lincoln Thomas Edison, Sir Arthur Cannon Doyle, also Queen Victoria. She was really into it. So there's so much more to spiritualism. I could list it more, but this was just an overview like I like to give and give some facts if you did not know them already. I would like to ask you at this time to turn around and give us a like and subscribe. We do have many others on this uh, channel that give spectacular uh, different points and tips and you name it in facts. So please, again, if you'd like to share, give us a sub subscription, you know, just hit that like. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next Occult Facts.